Welcome back. The much-awaited forensic report from the Lekki toll gate as to the events of October 20, 2020 has finally been submitted to the Lagos Judicial Panel on restitution for victims of SARS and other related matters. We have some of the key highlights from that report up next. Uses is admitted and margins be big. It's the 122nd sitting of the Lagos Judicial Panel on restitution for victims of SARS-related abuses and other matters. And the focus at these proceedings is the long-awaited forensic report from the Lekki Tollgate shooting of October 20, 2020. On the 29th of December 2020, the Lagos State Government had engaged Sentinel Forensic Limited, a private company, to conduct a crime scene investigation, examine the Lekki Concession Company's CCTV footage, and give digital expert opinion on the recording of the incident, as well as any evidence recovered during the visit of the panel to the scene. A director of the forensic company, Joseph Funshuako, compared the evidence submitted, and this is the findings as to the ballistics. The Nigerian Army submitted four ammunition. Two of them were 762 by 39 millimeter caliber, and that was the, the live one and the live that hadn't been fired. And two of them were 762 by 51 millimeter caliber. They are, they are both different. You have 7.62 by 39 millimeter ammunition. One fired, and this was of the live kind of ammunition. And one was a live ammunition that was not fired. Then you have blank rounds that were tendered. One of those blanks was fired, and one of those blanks was not fired. And the blanks that were tendered were 7.62 by 51 millimeter, which is quite different from 7.62 by. Now, it is possible to determine you know, what firearm fired what. Um, this is possible. Uh, uh, once you have the cartridge casings after the bullet has been fired, and you have the firearms in question, your suspected firearms. If you take a test fire from your suspected firearms and with the, you know, the cartridge case in question, you can determine with a high degree of certainty which of those firearms you know, discharge that cartridge case. We can't say what time it took place, but we can tell you if that firearm fired this ammunition. I mean, to determine the time, you may have to rely on other things, but what we'll simply do is a ballistics matching to see if this casing fits this firearm. On the video evidence submitted by the Lekki Concession Company and the investigation of the crime scene, the forensic expert gave this analysis. For the digital uh, evidence, um, the authenticity of the video evidence tendered by LCC could not be determined as we have no access to the servers from which the source recording was made. Uh, however, during extensive visual examination of the captured footage, uh, because we reviewed the footage frame by frame, um, the evidence that the footage given to us did not show any signs of being doctored. So the time frame and the pixel were consistent, suggesting that the integrity of so the integrity. The panel has adjourned till Saturday, September 11, to give lawyers in the matter an opportunity to study the forensic report so that they can cross-examine the expert witness on his findings. And just before we go, let's bring you a recap of some of the legal stories that made the headlines. We begin with the reports that the Chief Justice of Nigeria and Chairman of the National Judicial Council, Justice Tanko Muhammad, has held a marathon meeting with the six chief judges invited over the conflicting ex parte orders emanating from different parts of the country. A statement from the spokesperson of the NJC, Sojuyi, says that the CJN first had a one-on-one -on -one interaction with the chief judges as well as the chief judge of the FCT, Abuja. The CJN, who was said to be visibly angry, told the judges that they must put an end to the indiscriminate granting of ex parte orders 
conflicting judgments or rulings occasioned by forum shopping. Three of the judges who granted conflicting ex parte orders have been invited to appear before the National Judicial Council to show cause why disciplinary action should not be taken against them for granting the conflicting ex parte orders. The statement was, however, silent on the identity of the three judges. At the Supreme Court, the Attorneys General of the 36 states have sued Abubakar Malami, Attorney General of the Federation, over the alleged failure of the government to remit funds generated from stamp duties into state accounts. The states are arguing that they are the sole authorities to collect stamp duties and not the federal government. The Supreme Court is yet to fix a date for the hearing of the suit, which is coming at a time where there is conflict between some states and the Federal Inland Revenue Service over the collection of value-added tax, VAT. Meanwhile, the appeal court sitting in Abuja has ordered all parties to maintain status quo and refrain from taking action that would give effect to the judgment of a federal high court in Port Harcourt that allowed the River State government to collect value-added tax pending the hearing and determination of the instant suit. A three-man panel of the appellate court led by Justice Harunat Samani gave the order on Friday while ruling on an appeal filed by the Federal Inland Revenue Service. And away from issues of revenue, the 12 associates of Yoruba Nation agitator Sunday Adeyama, also known as Sunday Buhu, have instituted a rights enforcement suit against the Department of State Service for being paraded in the media as criminals. They filed the suit before Justice Obiara Iguatu of the Federal High Court, Abuja. In the suit, Igboho's associates sought a declaration of the court that their detention beyond 48 hours and their media parade without a court conviction constituted a breach of their fundamental rights. They also sought an order of perpetual injunction restraining the DSS from interfering with their personal liberty and freedom of expression. Similarly, the applicants asked for an order granting the sum of 100 million naira for aggravated and exemplary damages against the security outfit for what they termed a serial breach of the constitutional rights. During the proceedings, counsel to the DSS, Idowu Awu, told Justice Eguatu that his case file was stolen from a member of the legal team who was meant to bring it to the court. Justice Eguatu has, however, ruled that the file of the fundamental rights suit would be returned to the registry for reassignment since the court's vacation is ending soon. In another rights-related suit, the detained leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, IPUB, Namdi Kanu, has dragged the federal government of Nigeria to an Abia State High Court. The federal government, the Nigerian Army, the Department of State Service and the Nigeria Police are respondents in the suit. He also asked the courts to mandate the respondents to pay the sum of 5 billion naira for the physical, mental, emotional, psychological and other damages he claims to have suffered. The next hearing date is set for September the 21st in Umuahia. And we round off with the reports that Chidin Maojuku, the suspected killer of the chief executive officer of Super TV, Usifu Ataga, is to face prosecution for murder. Counsel to the police, Cyril Ajiofo, told Magistrate Adeola Adedayo that the police had received the legal advice from the Office of the Directorate of Public Prosecution, DPP, on the case. The DPP's advice shows that after careful consideration of facts available in the case file, a prima facie case of conspiracy, forgery and murder exists against a 300-level mass communication student of the University of Lagos, Chirima, and another person, Adidakwa Quadri. Through the DPP, the Lagos State Government has filed an eight-count charge at the Lagos High Court against the duo. The government has also filed a counter of possession of stolen property against Chidima's sister, Choma Eguchu. The case is, however, yet to be assigned to a judge for hearing. 
And that's our program this week. Don't forget that you can find these and past episodes of the program on our YouTube page. I'm Shalashi Ele. Thank you for watching and see you next week.